The Monster vs. The Nightmare sounds like a real Clash of the Titans, uh, a main event of main events, when the reality is the odds, as they usually are for every Naoya Inoue fight, are going to be wide. Marlon Tapales is very much expected to surrender, or rather have his titles, those WBA and IBF titles, ripped away from him, making Naoya Inoue undisputed at 1-2-2 in the very same year that he entered the division. But what we need to emphasise here is that even though the odds are going to be wide, Tapales is a unified champion. He got those belts off Akhmedaliev, fighting very smart over 12 rounds, earning a close decision. Uh, he is a decent fighter. You have to be if you've done something like that. But a lot of people are just going to be going, well, this is a gimme. But that says more about how good Inoue is rather than the opponent being subpar. Naoya has been, for many years now, the most dominant fighter in boxing. It's because he's got so much natural talent and he's refined what solid fundamentals he's always had. This is very much a marriage of athleticism and technique. And as we can see, it's incredibly potent. Now, a lot of people are expecting an early blowout. That could happen. But I think that's got to do with a combination of factors here. Of course, how good Naoya is. But with Tapales being a southpaw, I believe the record is something like no Southpaw has gone, what, further than three rounds with Naoya. They seem to match up very nicely to two of his key punches, the straight right hand and the left hook to the body, to the liver, to the ribs. Wherever you want to put it, you're going to wince and you're probably going to go down. And is there also a little bit of superstition at hand with what Naoya seems to do to Filipinos? He's becoming a bit of a Pinoy Punisher, isn't he? Uh, much like Manny Pacquiao was a Mexicutioner back in the noughties. We've also got John Real Casimiro still bouncing about, haven't we? They were supposed to have their fight April 2020. COVID intervened. We might still get that one in the future. Right now, the task of trying to stop the monster's warpath falls on the shoulders of Tapales, who is actually a bit shorter than Nyoya. This isn't perhaps the usual difference in size. You might expect the fact Nyoya has come up this year to 1-2-2. No, he's quite stocky to Parles. He's actually a little bit more in the form of Akhmedaliev, who of course he outpointed. He has this wide stance uh, and he's quite tricky. Now, there's pretty much no chance of knocking Nyoya out. I can't see it. He seems to have a very good chin and he's just very resilient, full of pride, and just so good. His defence has improved. Trying to knock him out will, will prove extremely difficult, barring some sort of horrendous cut stoppage. So that means Topalis has to try and construct, uh, has to walk the tightrope of somehow outgeneraling Nyoya over the 12 rounds. Now, one thing Topalis did against Akhmedaliev, which helped lead him to victory, was he kind of blended the bold with the cautious. He often had a lot of his weight on the back foot as he leaned away, saw what was coming. And then he'd pitch in these lead left uppercuts. And then it was in with the overhand left, you know, winding it up quite a lot. Uh, it would explode out of his little posture. Uh, and that can surprise you. And I suspect he somehow got to confuse what Nyoya expects from him. Give him different looks try and create the opportunity of him just making a little mistake, a little misjudgment, uh, and you hitting him hard with something that teaches him, look, you can't just run over me, and makes him think, all right, I've got to just change my approach a little bit here. I don't want to get hit by that one again. You've got to try and get him to dance to your tune a little bit, to, to jam his frequency. One of the core tenets in boxing is be first. And guys like Nyoya like Roy Jones Jr., like Manny Pacquiao in their heydays, because they were just flat out quicker than you, hands and feet, they pretty much always decided when they were going to initiate contact. It's a huge advantage. And then when they see you bite on that first feint, they know what your next move is going to be. They know how you're going to dip into the next punch. It's a domino effect, and they just construct your downfall because now you're just completely reactive to them. That's why you've got to try and give these guys different looks. You can't just stand there and get hypnotized by them. Maybe clinch a little bit, move around the ring excessively, uh, spam certain confusing punches. Yeah, if you can, be a little bit dirty, because if you can get them frustrated, their intentions become a little bit easier to see. 
So I do expect Apollos to show up in tremendous condition with a solid game plan. But it kind of is a classic case here of everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. I do believe that is Joe Lewis, right, who first said that and not Mike Tyson, if we're going to get the accreditation correct. Well, Nyoya has got so much speed, so much precision, and he's just absolutely at his peak right now at 30. He's just added a little bit more polish to him, I think, in the last two years since the Donair rematch. The, I don't know what Tapala is going to do. He's going to get hit first. He's going to realise he can't afford to get hit with too many more of those. Uh, and it will probably just be downwards from there. I would like to see Nayo, you have a bit of a tough one. Maybe have to think his way through it. Gets a bit frustrated. Maybe picks up a cut. You know, there's a little spanner in the works. And maybe if he did, more people then would give this victory more credit if he struggles a little bit. But with Tapales being a southpaw, I think Nayoya just matches up so well against them. What is usually the frustrating stance and style for people to deal with, he has just got the punches to defuse, and I think he will do inside of six rounds. But how do we all see this one going? Does anyone want to explain to me how Tapales wins this one? Who wants to call the shot that Nayoya might finish it with? And if the monster is as clinical as we're used to seeing, will that mean he overtakes Terence Crawford? as 2023's Fighter of the Year.